thank you for watching today. This is Kadir. Welcome to another Starfield New Game Plus video. Today I tackle a question that's bothered me since the May update. How long can I survive in an extreme environment with advanced gameplay options for environmental damage set? Specifically, can I survive on Talaman 2 if I were going to do the Hostile Intelligence quest? I'm not going to run that quest today, but I am going to test three different spacesuits and share the results so my next trip through this content in the survival mode is a success. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is just take a quick check of the gameplay options. And I have primarily left everything at normal except for the environmental damage and afflictions, damage restoration and affliction prognosis. So if I get an affliction, it could get worse, could get better. And I should be able to rest when I come back to the ship. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a custom combination of the Constellation spacesuit and the Mark I pack and helmet. And if you look at the table on the screen, in the thermal column in the center in blue, you'll see that that gives me a 30, 20, and 20, which is 70 thermal protection. I am going to wear a hazmat suit underneath that for 85, and I happen to have environmental conditioning at 3 of 4, which gives me 10 points in thermal. I think the second point there gives me the 10 points in thermal. So we'll step outside. I'm going to do all the testing here at Toleman 2, forward base 441. The environmental condition is called freezing cold and snow. That's one condition, and that's important. Now, there's two reasons I come here. One, it's consistent, and the second it is the site of the UC Vanguard quest, Hostile Intelligence. And that's an important quest for us to be able to get through if we're going to try to do it in survival. I need to know if I'm going to be able to complete that quest and have enough time, given the spacesuit that I'm going to wear. And one of the first things I've noticed is that at this location, all of the spacesuits seem to last about a minute before I start taking damage, which means I have 100% protection for almost 60 seconds, and then the damage kicks in. What I've done from there is I've taken nine samples at the one through five minute marks, and then I waited for a while, and I took samples at nine, 10, 11, and 12 minutes to find out what my damage was gonna be like. If you look at the table down below, there are seven columns. On the left-hand side, you'll see the 85 number. That is the rating for the suit that I'm wearing, or the combined suit, pack, and helmet. My health at 3,052 health, that is a level 147 Starborn character. The minute that I'm taking the sample at, then I do a calculation to determine how many seconds of damage I should have taken at that point in time. In the rust colored section, you have my health at the moment I take the sample, a calculation next to it of how much health I've lost, and then I do a calculation of what my rate of damage has been since the start of the damage. And if you look at that last column on the right hand side, it has a light yellow bar around the, around the outer edge. The number seems to be about 1.5, which is consistent with what I would expect. I'm going to assume from this point forward that for a high level character, level 147, maybe it starts at level 100, I don't know, but for a high level character at this point, I should be taking, if I had no protection whatsoever, 10 points of damage per second. Since my suit mitigates 85% of that, what's left for me is 1.5 points of damage per second. Now in the bottom left hand corner, I do another calculation that's important. And in this one, I look at my total health, 3,052, I divide it by 1.5, and I calculate that I should have 2,035 seconds of survival time after the first minute where I have 100% protection. Convert that to minutes, that should be 33.9 minutes. Essentially, I should have about 35 minutes to complete hostile intelligence from the moment I tell Hadrian I'm ready to continue in. I've also just received an affliction, frostbite. For the purpose of these tests, I am carrying meds and I take them immediately after I get any affliction in order to remove it from the rest of the equation. I just want to see the damage that's happening from the environment around me, not the afflictions themselves. Afflictions by default don't actually cause damage, although some when they reach the severe level will take your health down. Hypothermia, I believe at the severity level, will take your health down slowly. I don't know if that's in addition to the damage you're already taking from the environment. My tests so far haven't been conclusive. My second tests were with the Starborn spacesuit Solus which is received in NG plus five. The thermal rating on that suit is 50. All environmental protections on that suit are 50, and with the 10 I have from environmental conditioning, my effective rating is 60. I did the exact same series of tests in the same way, taking samples at one, two, three, four, and five minutes, nine, 10, 11, and 12 minutes. I calculated the effective rate of damage that I received in that suit and it looked like it was zeroing in 
on four eventually, which would make sense if 60% of the damage was mitigated. So if we assume I could take up to 10 points of damage per second without a suit at all, then if I had 60% mitigation, then I could take about four points of damage per second. If I calculate the maximum amount of time I would have to complete this quest using this suit, it actually comes up at about 12.7 minutes. If I add another minute to that, 13.7, maybe 14 minutes, that's a really short time. I'm not sure I could complete hostile intelligence in 14 minutes if I was wearing the Starborn spacesuit Solus. As a final test, I went to New Homestead and completed the quest in order to get the monster costume. The monster costume has no environmental protection of any kind, leaving me only with the 10 points of environmental protection I get from my own environmental conditioning. I couldn't actually complete this test and take all the same samples I did with the other two spacesuits because I died. The damage rate I calculated was nine points of damage per second, and that's consistent with the level of protection that this suit plus my environmental conditioning provided to me. Overall, this was an amusing test, and I wouldn't seriously consider using this for anything other than scaring tourists. As a final test, I wanted to use a character that wasn't level 147. I have a character named Wash, who has always been running in survival mode, and is at level 17. He has access to the Constellation suit, and because I leveled his lock picking, he was able to pick the lock in the basement of the lodge and get the Mark I suit as well. So I geared him up with the Constellation spacesuit and the Mark I pack and helmet and sent him to the surface of Tullamon II. The results were predictable. What I wasn't sure of in advance was that the damage per second that he received was not 1.5 points per second. Given his total health of 681, that would have given him almost no time at all to do anything on this planet. They're evidently scaling it, so he was receiving 0.3 points of damage per second, or about 20% of what a high-level character would receive. When I did the calculations using 0.3 points per second, he had about 2,270 seconds of time on the planet. He could actually spend almost 38 minutes, 39 minutes with the suit's protection, completing the quest Hostile Intelligence. That's a pretty good sign for lower-level characters, I think. I still think it's going to be a challenge. In my first run-through of Hostile Intelligence, I probably spent more time than that looting and looking around. But if you understand the environment and you're running in survival mode, you should probably understand going in. The goal is to get in and finish it as quickly as possible. So in the end, it is probably possible in survival mode with environmental afflictions turned on to complete this quest. I think it has to be done quickly. In addition, we're going to have to choose the right spacesuit, pack, and helmet combination and maybe do some prep work before we can do this quest. The alternative is to turn off this gameplay option for the duration of this quest. In addition to looking at a spacesuit, pack, and helmet combination for addressing thermal conditions, I wanted to also look at some of the other environmental conditions. For Airborne, I noticed that the refined UC Vanguard spacesuit, by default, has excellent coverage for airborne protection. Once again, if you couple that with a hazmat suit, you'll hit 85. The next one I looked at was corrosion. I think in the past, I didn't pay as much attention to these particular traits on pieces of gear. But going forward, anything with galvanized, lead-lined, antiseptic, or liquid-cooled on it could become very valuable. Combined with other pieces of armor that might already have a base level of corrosion resistance, it should be fairly easy with one piece with a perk on it to get to 85. In this particular set, a Navigator spacesuit already had a high level of corrosion protection, and I got a bonus. The ground crew helmet had corrosion protection as well, and I got a bonus on that one. I didn't really need to have the deep recon pack with the 20 corrosion on it at all, and I could have hit 85. Here's where I think we can get a little creative. In many cases, if I get out on a moon without an atmosphere, I'm exposed to both cold or heat and radiation. 
A very valuable combination would be to have protection from thermal and radiation in the same suit. This would allow me to explore certain types of moons fairly freely. What I noticed on these moons was that even if they had an extreme ambient cold temperature, I was actually getting a seven minute protection period compared to Tolomon where it was one minute. After the seven minutes were up though, the amount of damage I took was increased. So I think there's still some more testing to be done in that environment, but there's an interesting opportunity to start building sets of spacesuits, packs, and helmets. In this case, a deep seeker spacesuit, a shock troop pack, and an explorer space helmet, albeit with additional perks of lead-lined and liquid-cooled, allow me to reach this level of protection. With those tests completed, I did go to some additional moons and planets, and the results aren't identical. Ptolemon has one weather condition, freezing with snow. That weather condition seems to wear down the suit's 100% protection very quickly in one minute, but the rate of damage after that seemed to be fairly predictable if you had the right level of protection. There are other moons and planets I went to that had other conditions or had more than one condition at the same time, and in some cases, my suit protection lasted for a very long time, seven minutes it looked like. I could walk around the surface of the planet for seven minutes and take zero damage whatsoever. But as soon as those seven minutes were up and I started to incur damage, the damage was at a higher rate than what I experienced on Toloman. So even in a suit that had excellent thermal protection of 85, there were cases where it looked to me like I was taking five or six points of damage per second. I would absolutely need to plan my trips on those planets more carefully. But the basic strategy should work the same which is you can stack up protections on a suit, try to use those in the appropriate place, whether it's on a specific planet, moon, or for a specific quest or environment, and then make sure you take enough meds with you to deal with any of the afflictions that come up. I ran around the surface of several planets for extended periods of time, and for the most part, a lot of the afflictions don't create more damage and they don't kill you outright. It's difficult to tell if the deaths that I incurred in those environments were because of, let's say, hypothermia at a severe level, or whether they were because of the continued damage that was being done by the environment. So those are the tests. I feel ready for the hostile intelligence quest, and I'm going to take at least one character again through it in survival mode. The Constellation of Mark I suit provide the best protection available at 85%. Other than the lock picking requirement, those are available to anyone, even new players. Let me know in the comments if you've successfully completed hostile intelligence with survival mode settings like these, if you used any special strategies, if you took a run and gun approach, or if you had to disable the feature. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Remember, simplicity is an exact medium between too little and too much. It is the final achievement, the crowning reward of art. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and get notifications. This is Kinnear, and I'm out of here.